Would you like to know how to create a magic club in Photoshop? If so, stick with me until the end of the video. Hello there. What you see before you is another one of the setting specific items that I have illustrated for my upcoming Pathfinder and D&D supplement, the Nowhere Emporium. Uh, that's the name of the supplement. The weapon, we named it the Nowhere Cudgel. As you can see for yourself, it's a crude looking club, but as all of us who play tabletop RPGs know, looks can be deceiving. So, you can imagine it's perfect for druids, and perhaps another class that just might be included in the supplement if the Kickstarter goes well enough. We still don't have the exact date, but don't you worry, it will be announced with fanfare. Before we continue, I gotta remind you to like this video, I'm all about animation and illustration in tabletop RPGs using Photoshop and After Effects, so if you like this type of stuff, consider subscribing and turning on all the notifications by clicking that bell icon. If you just did that, you seriously rock. I hope you don't miss any of my future uploads. Now that that's taken care of, we may proceed with the video. When it comes to the process, those of you who are familiar with digital illustration will see that I still didn't have a proper idea on how to tackle it. This was the second ever item that I illustrated for this supplement. I was still honing the style and getting familiar with the steps of the Photoshop illustration process. From this perspective I can tell you what I did wrong, but back then I believe I had no clue. However, when it comes to improving a skill, repetition is the key. And by repetition I don't mean drawing the same thing over and over again, but repeating the process of creation and familiarizing yourself with the tool that you're using, whether it's a pencil or a digital stylus. And on the way you'll be finding different solutions to the problems you're experiencing. Okay, problem might be too strong of a word, let's say challenges. What I wanted to say is that you'll be honing your problem-solving abilities. And that's exactly what happened to me. I haven't actively drawn for more than 10 years. Then I took some lessons to have a better understanding of the basics. I familiarized myself with the pencil, sketching all those items in my sketchbook. Then I familiarized myself with the feel of the stylus against the pen display. And finally I familiarized myself with the Photoshop brushes. But I'm still researching and finding better solutions to speed up my digital painting process. In the later videos you'll see that I created some of the brushes myself and I'm really proud of some of them. The creation process of this image is quite simple, pretty much like the previous one, check it out by clicking the card in the upper right corner. I used my sketchbook to yeet some ideas out of my head, just to see how the item should look like. I traced that sketch in Photoshop and used the line work to create a shape. I'm not calling it line art simply because it's not, I'm aware that it looks like a steaming pileup. Yeah. I took the chalky brush at 30% opacity and flow and started slapping the color onto the shape until I was satisfied with the outcome. I had to paint some sharper lines just to accentuate the texture and again use a photo of the same tree from before to give it some liveliness. For the final touch I placed some off-white blue tinted rim light and the shadow beneath the cudgel. If you're making an illustration, the amount of detail that you will add to it depends solely on the medium it's gonna be viewed on. If you're making an illustrated icon or an item that will be viewed from the bird's eye perspective, of course you're gonna make it chunkier and not pay so much attention to the smaller details. In my case, the items are gonna be a quarter of an A4, which is about a quarter of a letter format. Therefore, I needed to fill them up with some finer brush strokes and photo texture. And I like painting my items twice as big as they should be, so once I shrink them to fit the actual size, they will look even better. And I like painting my items twice as big as they should be, so once I shrink them to fit the actual size, they will look even better, seemingly more detailed if you will. If you have any additional questions or need a piece of advice, by all means leave a comment below the video and I'll do my best to answer. While we're at the comment section, what do you think this item's properties are? Let me know how you would stat it, whether you're playing D&D, Pathfinder or something else entirely. Again, thanks for spending some time with me today. I'm happy that you watched the video until the end. Let me remind you to like, subscribe, turn on all the notifications and share this video with your friends who might be interested. Doing all those things helps this channel grow and thus we can all grow as a community. Make sure to visit the description box below the video for some extra freebies on my website's download section and the links to my social media and RStation portfolio. Until next time, this is Crafty and I bid you farewell.